I love that. Joining me in studio, Carla Hokamo, a senior lecturer at Auckland University who specialises in the areas of personal identity and diversity and Reo lecturer at AUT, here, me, Kelly. Tēnā koroa. Thank you both for being here this morning. Yeah. Um, I find this whole discussion around cultural identity just so interesting and this notion that you must speak accorded or Māori to be Māori, is that a fair um, challenge to put to people, do you think, Hemi? Uh, yeah, I do think it's a fair challenge. I agree with what Woolley said. I think when you're in touch with your culture, you know your culture, you know who you are, language and culture go hand in hand. You become a more rounded person, so I think um, maybe there's something missing from that rounded person if they don't have an understanding of their language. What's, what's your feeling about it, Carla? Well, I think about identity a little bit differently because I'm a psychologist and I think everybody needs to have one and everybody needs to feel really good about themselves in some way and we construct our identity by drawing from the resources we've got available in our environment. So that's one aspect of it. And the other thing is I think that culture has layers and a cultural value like for Nongatanga is a lot more resilient. That reverberates through Māori society now despite all the socio-historical um, experiences that we've had as a people, whereas language has been quite vulnerable. So that's been eroded, but the value's still hit there. So the fact that people feel that Fanonga Tanga is crucial to their Māori identity, it makes them feel good about themselves, to me that's testimony that it's resilient in Māori society. The language, I don't think that it's a practical reality for everybody to be able to experience and express and even hear on a day-to-day -day basis in their lives. So not necessary for them to feel good about being Māori, nor is it necessary for them to identify about Māori. I think it's ideal if we've got it, so I agree with that, but I think what Willie said was right. I think, you know, we just need to connect with each other and we need to feel good about being Māori and being together and enjoying culture together is one way of doing that. Because I wonder if it, if it builds up um, difficulties for people if they feel that they don't have, and I, and, you know, I speak from personal experience, not being fluent in te reo, mm. that the more that you're told that you're not Māori because you can't speak, the harder it becomes to, to get it, to grasp it. Mm. What do you make of that, Hemi? Yeah, uh, I, I, I can understand what you're saying. Um, I think it's the challenge that, that someone laid down uh, using those words, if you, if you don't speak te reo Māori, then you're not Māori. Um, and it's the challenge is there for people to uh, pursue their language. And I think it is accessible. I think there's enough mm. avenues available to us um, to, to learn. Why, why do you think, I mean, 11% of us speak Māori fluently according to these statistics. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you agree with that through your own studies, but 11% is um, not good enough, so obviously. Mm -hmm. But why do you think so many Māori don't take those avenues? And, and I agree with you, there are a lot of avenues and ways that we can get out there. But why do so many of us not? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> What I about you, Carla? Have I you got think, any thoughts? Well, I think it's a really complex range of things that might bring to bear upon that, but if I might offer a few, a few thoughts. Love it. It could be a low priority for people that just are basically trying to keep their families happy, keep mm. you know working, paying the bills, and it is a time-consuming thing if you don't know where to start. Um, it might also not be a necessary tool for them in their day-to-day -day lives. The other thing is, I think, about Māori, I wonder if they should ask, you know, if you don't speak to reo Māori, how much of it do you understand? Because I think a lot of us actually understand a lot more. So we can still engage in Māori cultural situations, we can understand a bit on television, you know, we can still feel like we've got a connection with it without having to speak it fluently. What I just want to say thing about, um, you know, you're not Māori if you don't speak Māori, I think you can take that literally or you can take it metaphorically. I think if you speak Māori the way that you think is more aligned with Māori values and I think mm. that that is maybe contributing to that idea that you need to speak it to be Māori but uh, I don't think that's a practical reality for most Māori now, obviously not. That is very interesting. We are mm. going to come back to you guys in just a moment.